Melody Robinson, two-time world champion with the Black Ferns, also one of the first, if not the first woman who was on Sky Sport, commentating, presenting, discussing, debating rugby. Also a mum of two. And married to the most perfect man in the universe. Welcome, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're right on the one. <laughs> you know, he brought, he brought me a pair of um, a Hugo Boss white um, high-heeled ankle boots from Paris once, just <sighs> off the boat. Well, he, Can you believe that? He what? Yeah. And white awesome. Hugo Boss ankle boots from <laughs> Paris. He is my hero. He understands <laughs> women. He understands you, the female brain. That's right. That's right. Bribe, bribe us just once every so often and well, we'll behave. There look, you go. They just pamper you. That's all. I mean, as much as you're independent, strong woman, you still like a bit of pampering every now and again, don't you? Oh, Nothing wrong with that. 100%. That's right. He got he got control of the, the TV remote that night. <laughs> Good on you, Marcus. <laughs> Uh, you're my hero, mate. All right, Mel, 55-3 um, against Wales, and we put a big score on them last time. I just don't know how much we can read into that going into France. It's great that, you know, we're playing well, we're scoring a lot of tries, all of that kind of stuff, but it's not France, is it? No. No, you can't read much. Um, at the end of the day, France has got uh, a way stronger forward pack, uh, a better performing defensive system, and they've got um, some pretty long kickers in their back line as well. They definitely play a kicking game really hard into the territory, which um, New Zealand actually hasn't come across yet so far in this World Cup, so this is going to be really interesting. What else do they bring that we haven't seen? Um, I think that uh, if you look at second five eight and centre, uh, Vernier and Philippon, those two players have pretty much not let one attacking player through them the entire um, Women's World Cup. Wow. They're the best defenders, uh, accuracy, and then also Philippon steals um, a heck of a lot of ball as well. So those two there um, are definitely two players they haven't come up against. And I think you know how um, New Zealand like to attack the line and look for the offloads. So they won't be able to get away with that as much with these two um, playing for France. Do you think that we're going to approach this in a different way and play differently? Yep, I think uh, with Smithy's gone and put Renee Holmes back at fullback. So what he's indicating is, firstly, he, he needs a fullback that's going to be in position with um, a more pres prescribed kicking game, someone who can nail the shots at goal with penalties. So that means he says, OK, this is probably going to be a bit tighter because it's semi-final, so we need someone who can slot the three-pointers in the conversion. Yep. Um, yeah, but I, I think that they'll still be confident in speeding the game up and playing a really quick game, but I think you'll see where they attack will change. It won't necessarily be in the wide channels. It'll probably be straight through the middle, up the guts. So you're actually talking about, you're talking of uh, actual point of attack here, aren't you? Yeah, totally. Yeah, where, where, they, where they attack. Sometimes um, it's just on the shoulder of first five, sometimes they go really wide. Um, I think, though, that for this one, they're going to have to totally dominate. I oh, know, this is just such a cliche, isn't it? Totally no, true. Dominate up front. Totally true. Physicality. Yep. Earn the right to go wide. Yeah. You know, that old one. Of course, though. But, I mean, it's so it's so important because, you know, my fear and my worry is, and, you know, I'm a worry wart in these matters, but it's just that, you know, we haven't had the quality of the opposition that we need because these two teams, given what they did to us last year, I know that we're playing a lot better. I know that there's a lot more confidence, and I know that the way that Wayne Smith coaches and who he's got with him and so forth, but you've still got to play those opponents, don't you? I mean, have you got any concerns about the fact that we haven't met opposition that has really tested us? Well, they, we've had more test matches this season leading into a Women's Rugby World Cup than we've ever had. Okay. So um, that's a positive. I think the analysis that uh, Graham Henry and Wayne Smith and co. bring is um, far better than in the past. And I think they have a game plan which has been designed by Smitty and um, Graham to take out the French team. And, you know, uh, one of the things I've been really working on is not giving away penalties because at the end of the day, your most important uh, defence against a massive big line out with a rolling mall is don't give away penalties, don't let them kick to the sideline and throw the ball back in. So um, I think they only gave away a few penalties last week, which was a massive improvement. Mel Robinson is with us, two-time World Cup winner on the platform, and we're talking about the Black Ferns versus France, Eden Park this Saturday. It's going to be a sellout, which is absolutely glorious. Territory as well. I'm getting that from you as well. We're going to be down there in now, don't we? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I, I don't. I don't know if we'll pick it much. We just don't. That's not our style. Um, I do think though that uh, our first five has certainly got a kicking game. Uh, absolutely, uh, Ruahe. So where she chooses to kick, um, that will be up to her because she's got a good rugby brain. But I think they're going to attack the line. 
I like how they're playing. I just think that the speed, and actually they were really aggressive last week. Yeah. Uh, the lock, Maya Roos, oh, her stats are unbelievable, and it's only her first season. She debuted at the end of last year, but she's only been playing for Blackburn for 12 months, and she is killing it. Gosh, she's, she's the person I'm keeping my eyes on. Okay, fitness levels was one big thing that last year, a criticism from... Uh, well, uh, whether it was Glenn Moore or whether it came out afterwards, but it was certainly something that Wayne Smith recognised when he first took over the team as well. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that we just hadn't played. And I think you've got to cut some slack given the fact that we basically went over there and played these two opponents and walked into a bear trap, didn't we? Mm. Yeah, we did. And I think that physical conditioning wasn't there, but they also, uh, a lot of the time you'd see someone make a tackle and then they'd take a long time to get off the ground and rejoin play. Whereas now the work rate from smashing defensively, getting up and fanning back out or getting back involved on attack in terms of getting to the breakdown is completely and utterly changed. I've got no worries about physical conditioning or fitness um, with this team. I think actually they could be superior uh, to most of the teams, it, it, actually to England and France. I just think that they are way more agile. Um, they're smaller. If you have a look at the actual type of athlete that's yep. running out for... Yep. Uh, the Black Ferns, yeah, we've got a couple of um, nice, powerful-looking props, but the rest of them are long. Yeah, they're thin, athletic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, totally. Yep. But the, the loss of the French halfback, how important or, or as not as that? Hugely, hugely. She is the standout halfback all year, even while she's not playing, she's still, you know, in the box seat for getting in the dream team for World Rugby this year because she's that good. Her kicking game is unbelievable. France are really missing that. Bourdon does not kick the ball very often. And then she's one of the most incredible attackers as well, as well as having a great pass. So I think Sansus not being there is um, a massive issue for them. And even her leadership and stuff and decisions on the field is a big loss too. We have faced some adversity, Mel. We were down against Australia to start with. So that was kind of, is that, you know, what I'm trying to get to, I suppose, is, you know, just a kick in the pants so that if things aren't going well, that we that we maintain our composure, that we maintain our game plan. That's going to be absolutely so vital in this particular game because there will be nerves. You're in front of a home crowd. There's massive expectations, all of that kind of thing. And if New Zealand rugby does not heed the warning of playing France at any level, man, woman, girl, boy, at any team, well, we're fools, aren't we? Yeah, totally. Well, do you know what? I look at people like Sarah Hedeney, and Ruby Tui, Stacey Flula, Teresa Fitzpatrick, Portia Woodman. These girls have won Olympic gold medals in sevens. They go. have been under test match pressure in the sevens game before, and I would put faith that they would be able to handle it. My question is, if there's a mongrel out there giving it to our forward pack, can they handle that? Because that's way more difficult. We have basically got a whole lot of clean um, players in New Zealand who are not competitive um, like some of the other players that run out there, particularly for England and Marley Packer. So mentally, can they handle a bit of the old lip, the old sledging? That's, that's my key question. I reckon... No, that's see, that's I, you say that on here, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of think I should feel shocked or something, but why the hell should I feel shocked? I mean, of course, it's combative <laughs> sport, isn't it? Why the hell are you giving it to each other? Here am I thinking it's nicey nice. Hell no, it's a game of rugby. What am I? I'm an idiot. Yeah, see, it's great when you say that. I, I mean, I think we will welcome a little bit of that, don't we? Oh, yeah. Well, look, I'd love to put a, a microphone on Marley Packer. She's a seven for um, England. Just watch her in the other game against Canada, and you'll see what I mean. The refs mic picks her up a heck of a lot, especially at scrum time. She's always talking, and it is hilarious. She'd be in a bit of a comedy show. Probably, um, you know, not the language that we'd want our small children to be sure. listening to, but it does amuse me, for sure. OK, well, we're a thirty favourites, I saw today. France are three bucks. And I thought, you know, if you bet with your head, not your heart, it's not a bad bet. I mean, you know, I know the TAB's made us favourites. Do you feel like we're favourites? Uh, I do. I think that the way that they've accelerated their play over this last three months is unbelievable. They're playing great rugby. It's yeah, true. ridiculously good. Mm. Some of those tries, I mean, I was sitting next to Anna Richards um, in the VIP. Got good name VIP drop, concert. nice flex. Yeah, very important yeah. player in the past, nice. And even she said to me, geez, it was a good try. So if Anna Rich is impressed, I know that this team is playing some good rugby. How it's much better skills. How much better is women's rugby now at test level than when you were playing? Of course it develops, it changes, everyone gets fitter, everything gets faster and that, but how different is the game? 
Next year, look, the defensive systems are definitely better than they used to be against us uh, and the uh, intensity across more of the teams is tougher. Um, but, you know, there's only five fully professional teams playing at this Women's World Cup. Believe it or not, Canada actually had to fundraise oh, well, I heard to get that. into yeah. camp. Yeah. yeah, so um, the fact that Canada's in the semi-finals just shows how um, much potential they have to get even better with the type of athlete they've got there. So no, I think it's definitely advanced. Uh, there's a big summit here in Auckland next week for all the big wigs for world rugby and they're focusing on um, world rugby's strategy and plan around women's rugby and they're going to put a major play in there around the investment and how it brings business outcomes. And I think that kind of language to all of those different CEOs. Music to the um, years. Music to the years. Yeah, it's brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. Are you involved in this? Because you should be, because I know that you did your Masters on this and that. Have they asked you? I'm mm. at the Rugby World Cup Limited Board. I'll be there Friday morning giving them hassles and keeping them Go on. with their eye on women's rugby. Absolutely. You look back now when you were playing, and I know it's completely different in that, but just in terms of how much resources it was, like what did you have to do to get to a World Cup when you first went to a World Cup? Did you have to pay your own way? or I mean, where did you stay? All of that kind of stuff. <laughs> Funny should should ask that because we uh, had Rob Fisher, who was chairman of New Zealand Rugby, turned up to watch one of our... Australian test matches in around about 1995 and he turned around to New Zealand rugby and said you know what we should invest in those women they're actually playing bloody good rugby good on him so from 96 to 98 we had a budget which actually paid for all of our training camps we got the same kind of gear as the All Blacks in terms of our kit and they flew us to you know Churchill Cup in Canada and we got some you know not many but good enough tests to prep us for 98 yep. so I think people like him and then George Scudder was uh, in charge of all the teams and he used to just put budget towards us without getting any approval and then he'd get his <laughs> Good there. on you George so Good on you George yeah. Yeah, so, and, and then Daryl Soso was at yeah, he's, yeah, Can't actually forget his name he's been immense as well yeah yeah, and remember, I got my fifteen dollars a day. Oh my cap. god! Okay, so what is that? Yeah. That's kind of a pint and half a bag of crisps, isn't it, over there? <laughs> no, because all the food was supplied, so you'd save your money and you'd spend it all at the end. But but you were professional, though, Mel. That's what I'm getting at. Your team was professional, and I, and I know you, and I've known you long enough and well enough that you you were professional players, but you weren't you know professional if you know, understand the definition yeah. of the term. But you looked yeah. prepared like you were and played like you were. Totally. 20, we did 20 to 25 hours minimum in Surrey Rugby every week. And if you look at those contracts, which uh, the Black Ferns have, the, um, some of them can be 30 hours. So actually, when you look at that, um, the time that we put into professional training was uh, nearly the same. Um, and then we'd just balance it with work or study at the same time. You can't None look back, though, can you? Sorry, I'm sorry. But you can't look back and go, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. I mean, that's not the case, is it? Mate, I wouldn't have ended up in some fantastic jobs in the media if I had been full-time athlete. Right. Stuff that I, okay. I much prefer to. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Uh, I mean, a lot easier to sit contract. and talk about, isn't it? Hey, we haven't even mentioned England yet, and I've kind of avoided that. Mel Robinson is with us, two-time yeah. winner of the Women's World Cup, and this is an England side playing Canada. And you know, and I suppose it's a little disrespectful of me and others because I don't know a single person that gives them a hell's hope at all of beating England. Is that fair, or is that just how it is? That's fair. That's fair. This is this is a team. What? How many wins are they on a row? Twenty nine. Thirty four. Yeah, thirty row? something. I think. Yeah, oh, crazy. I mean, that's ri ridiculous. Um, they've got one of the best props in the world, in Sarah Byrne. They've got one of the best packs when it comes to set pieces. Their line out, honestly. Oh, I mean, I just watch it and just go, oh my god, it's just everything about it's perfect. Abby Ward, the lock, she controls all of that. Um, they've got the most capped women's rugby player in the world, captaining them, and you know what experience and world class means for World Cup wins. Um, and then they've got some really good players in the backs who can actually run as well. Um, Helena Rowland is one of them. She's playing fullback this week. She is a great attacker. Um, Tatiana Hurd is a massive big ball runner in the middle. So it's a very balanced team. But they do play very traditional rugby the majority of the time, territory. But it's winning rugby, Mel. Play. It's winning rugby, okay? It's so boring, though. Yeah, but, but boring is good when it comes to a World Cup. <laughs> boring wins World Cups, you know? Well, yes, we have been proved that a number of times in the past. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of the reasons I have enjoyed teams like the Wallabies or the All Blacks winning the World Cup because they do have a different philosophy of how you win World Cups, which hopefully also comes true for this one. A couple of quick questions. We'll let you go. I always thank you so much for your time. 
Why don't the Kiwi Ferns get the same kind of mass media coverage here as the Black Ferns? And I was just saying to Lachlan, um, you know, look, I, I haven't spent any time, uh, you know, around this team or talking about this team or anything else. But next week we're going to jump on like we did um, with the with the Black Ferns and look for stories and look for players because I'm damn sure that there's a real parallel there, isn't it? I mean, do you feel that you know we need to turn some attention that way as well? Yeah, I would say uh, there's so many different reasons they don't get the same coverage. Um, they don't get a lot of competitions. They don't get a lot of competitions here in New Zealand for people to see them. Um, probably they are not resourced or not a lot of investment from their union um, or, or their governing body. Um, and, yeah, they just haven't had a huge number of athletes yet who have built a profile. I think Honey Hitomi was the last one. Yeah, and so yeah. A lot of those athletes individually could actually um, start a move them, movement themselves. I think we've seen that with your Ruby Tui types. That's really generated interest as well. Um, so they probably need a bit of support. Yeah, a bit of help along uh, that way. Yeah, a bit of encouragement, yeah. yeah. Or somebody with yeah, some nows just to step in and actually say, hey, look, I'll actually do this for you would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, they do play some good league. But, you know, they'll steal, they'll steal the rugby girls, so I can't support you. I can't support Lee. All right, so Eden Park, then on Saturday, <laughs> it's going to be a bumper house. We've got two semi-finals. Oh, my God, I hope it is fine. That's just what I'm praying for. I don't want that, what we saw when Australia played as uh, England out at, out at um, Waitakere, where you get the monsoon happening. We don't want that at all. We want a nice dry track, don't we? Yep, 100%. And don't forget the music acts. You must love a bit of shapeshifter. I love oh, Rob Ruha and Cahal. This is yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm an old hips way from way back. You know that. Polyester yeah, yeah, suits, totally. poor snakeskin moccasins, a little bit of music. Yeah, I'm there. All You're right. Good looking, good looking prospect of a man. <laughs> Eleven two. Thank you so much for your time. As always, we'll catch up next week. Thank you, Mel. See you, mate. Okay, bye bye. Mel Robinson with us.